Before we begin, here's a disclaimer. This episode will contain some points of subject matter that may be sensitive to some viewers. If you wish to watch this video, please proceed with caution. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello my angels, it's me, Lord Nicolina, and welcome back to Angel Rise. Before this episode officially begins, I would like to take some time and say thank you to those who have supported my last two poem videos, that being Justice and Inseparable. I will pop links to them on the screen right here for those of you who haven't seen them yet. And to be honest, they're definitely more of the most emotional videos I've made, considering my friendship with Kestrel has basically changed my life. And speaking of Kestrel, whenever you're watching this, my dear friend, a massive shout out to you. You're the best. Also, I released a skit back on Monday this week at the time I'm recording this, and it's based on something I feel I'm very good at. I will also link that on the screen right here for those of you who haven't checked it out yet. With that being said, let's get on to this episode's topic. Have you ever heard of the phrase, fall down seven times, get up eight? It's a quote about resilience and willing to keep moving forward despite any trouble that goes down. And that's exactly the topic of this episode in which I will be sharing four stories of times where I thought it was game over, but I was back on my feet, more determined than ever. Story number one. This is something I made a point of back in episode 11, that being in where I nearly quit the PDHS hockey program, more specifically the teams, for good. Here, however, I will shine light on an incident that sparked this. The day was March the 6th, 2017, and I was with the PDHS boys hockey team for their regional tournament known as the Central Western Ontario Athletics Association Championship, or COASA for short. On that day, I was helping the team like so, and we did well to start winning our first game. Same can't be said for the second game, however, as we ended up losing it, and it was during this game that the incident took place. During the course of the game, the team didn't play well, and their frustration showed, sometimes to the point of causing scrums after whistles and taking unnecessary penalties. Keep in mind, this was a common thing during the season. Then, during a shift change in the second period, in which I was in charge of the bench doors, one of the players, Tyler McKenzie, nicknamed Zippy, was feeling frustrated and being the reassuring person that I am, I tried telling him to calm down as best he can, during which he threw his stick against the front of the bench and then it bounced off, and the butt end hit me on the front of my right leg. This wasn't intentional, by the way. He was frustrated, and he accidentally hurt me in the process. I'll be honest, it hurt quite a bit. And right then and there, I thought it was the beginning of the end. I left the bench soon afterwards, and didn't return for the rest of the game. Though I could have been okay physically to return to the game, mentally, I felt there was no chance. Tears were coming down my face quickly as I made my way towards the locker room. Then I went in and threw my helmet against the near wall of the room and sat down, distraught about what happened. Eventually I did calm down, and the mark the stick hit left behind, while not there anymore, I still vividly remember to this day. It was quite something. And either after the second period, or after the game was over, 
Tyler did come up to me and apologize for what happened. And no hard feelings came of it. I did get better enough to be on the bench for our last round robin game, which was a must win, and it was against the host school. Sadly, we didn't win, but not by much. During the game, however, I did decide that once the tournament ended for us, in this case, being eliminated in round robin play, I was going to leave the boys team. And I did just that, when I addressed the team in my post-game speech. However, I really thought about just quitting PDHS hockey in general, because I felt my studies were more important than that. However, on the car ride back, my mother made the suggestion of switching to the girls team, as they're a lot more disciplined than the boys team. Keep in mind, girls tend to have a lot more patience than boys do, and I learned that from a video I watched a couple years after I left the boys team. But there are some opposite cases, no doubt. Anyways, I really liked the idea of switching to the girls hockey team like my mother suggested, and I did so for the rest of my high school life. And like the old saying goes, the rest is history. Though, I did have a couple troubles with the girls' hockey team, however, they weren't as bad as when I was with the boys' hockey team in grade 10. Regardless, I pushed forward and made the most of my time with the girls' team, even sharing a joke one time with one of the girls' players during a practice, who said to me when I mentioned my switch, Screw the boys. <laughs> I giggled a bit at it. And it definitely does stick with me to this day. And boy, does it have quite a meaning to this day for me. But that meaning, I will share with you all another time. This next story may seem quite bizarre to you all, but I feel this is worth sharing. It was at the beginning of my victory lap year of high school in September of 2019. And at the time, I was staying at my father's place while my step-cousin's father was out on his yearly fishing trip, and my mother was watching over his house. One night, at around 3 in the morning, I woke up unexpectedly with a sore throat, and it was honestly the worst sore throat I believe that I've had in my life. Keep in mind, this was before COVID-19 existed. So I went downstairs to the dining area, and not long after, my father checked in on me, and I explained to him what was going on. I did take some medicine, and I did get back to sleep. When I did get up a few hours later, my throat was still hurting, though not as bad as before. And you may think I'm crazy, but I went to school anyways. Not because my mother or father forced me to, but I felt like I was okay to do so. And let me be honest, nothing bad happened throughout the day, and the day was just like any other. Just a good day at the office in my terms. Now in today's terms, there's no way I would have gone to school that day. Yet being the brave soul that I was there, I couldn't waste a moment. The sore throat did persist throughout the rest of the week, dissipating as the week went on, but I still went to school. I'm even shocked to this day that I went to school that week despite my sore throat. I honestly would never have dreamed of it. Would I do it again? We'll see, but it is highly unlikely. This next story is quite dark which is why I mentioned the disclaimer at the beginning of the video. So I suggest you have a box of tissues beside you just in case. I'm sure many of you have thought of this before, and I have too. That being suicide, it's honestly one of the scariest thoughts in the world. 
the thought of one taking their own life. In my case, it was on New Year's Day 2021. I was at my father's place and we were doing Christmas present opening from his part of the family, along with my older sister and her husband. I honestly wasn't in the best mood, as you would surmise here. At around 5 p.m., I went up to my room, right before the present opening was about to begin, and I didn't come down for the whole duration of it. Not even to have dinner. Not right away, at least. For the last week and a half, I was falling apart mentally, and I felt this was my true rock bottom. It was because of my social media struggles, and my father felt like I needed to do something productive to pass the time, as well as take a social media break. I'll be honest, I eventually would settle on the cause. I dismissed it at first, but this was true the whole time. If that was the life that I was going to live, I definitely felt that I had no purpose. That's when I considered suicide. To be specific, taking a knife or any sharp object and shoving it into my chest or neck and pray that I bleed out. There, I felt I only cared about no one else but myself. Yet at the same time, I couldn't bear the thought of me taking my own life. Because my family and friends appreciate me with a heart of gold. And the devastation that would come upon them if I did commit suicide would be incredible. I couldn't bear to take my own life. So that's when I called my parents for help. And my father was the one who came up and helped me get back on my feet. And gave me the push I needed to take a social media break as well as help him out with a few things around the house while I stayed at his place. Eventually I did return to living with my mother, as I did have some struggles with living at my father's place, and felt like my mother's place was my best safe haven. Don't get me wrong, I love my father's place. But that night there, I'll honestly never forget. And it was truly the night that made me begin to realize the true matter of how I was feeling. Before I move on to the last story, there is something I would like to tell you all. If you, or anyone you know, is thinking about self-harm or suicide, please don't hesitate to call or text your local suicide prevention hotline or emergency department. They can provide you with the support you need. Trust me, one call or text can truly be the difference between life and death. Now, on to the last story. This happened in April of 2022. To be exact, it happened two days after I made episode 13 of Angel Rise. The night before, I shared a note to Instagram saying how thankful I was for my friendship with Kestrel. I kept that deep in my heart as I went to bed. Before I went to sleep though, Kestrel shared a podcast video that she and their boyfriend were a part of with some other people that they knew. She mentioned that she was going to be part of this podcast a few days prior, and I'll be honest, I was pretty excited for Kestrel. I was happy that she was going to be part of a podcast. I saved it until the morning though, as I wanted to get a good night's rest. Then the following morning at 11am on April 23rd, I got to watching the podcast video. I won't mention the name of it, because it does give me bad thoughts whenever I think of it. As the video went on for the first five minutes, it was at best okay for me, but as it went on, it deteriorated rapidly. 
about seven minutes in, Kestrel made a joke about suicide. And that honestly made my heart sink. Because I know that Kestrel's mental condition isn't the best. And she's had mental struggles over the years. Afterwards, the other people she and their boyfriend were with started making jokes about sensitive subjects, including the cancel culture phenomenon, which I absolutely despise. I couldn't stand watching it, and after 16 minutes of watching, I disliked the video and clicked out of it, screaming in rage in the process. The only thought in my head at that time was, why was Kestrel part of that nonsense? This is not the version of them I see. I expressed my frustration on Discord, crying as I did so, and it didn't take too long for Kestrel to respond, but my mind wasn't in the mood to respond immediately, as I wanted time to think. It took two more messages from Kestrel for me to get up and respond. I honestly could sense the fear in what she typed, fearing that I was going to cut ties with them right there. But all I wanted was to think and recover. Knowing if I made one wrong comment, our friendship would have ended in a finger snap. The friendship between Kestrel and I was too precious for me to let go of. I, nor Kestrel, weren't letting our friendship fall apart that easily. In the end, Kestrel and I were able to make up, with Kestrel even checking in about an hour after our initial chat, and I explaining why I was upset in the first place. We haven't had any issues between the two of us since then. To think, the day before, I wrote a note saying how thankful I was for the friendship between Kestrel and I. And then the very next day, have our friendship that close to ending. It's honestly one of the more heartbreaking moments I've ever had considering that, and I still get emotional whenever I think about it. But I'm happy the end result was a good one. Though there are lots of people in this world who, after a bad moment, would give up and resent over it, there are many who would do the opposite, me included. There are many bad moments in my life that have had me down on my knees, but in the end, I kept going, letting resilience take over, becoming a resilient angel in the process. That's all for episode 24, everyone. Let me tell you all, if I was still extremely resentful about those stories that I told you about, I probably wouldn't have been as resilient as I am today, let alone have a caring heart. If you did enjoy this episode, definitely feel free to leave a like and share this with your loved ones. Spread the word about Angel Rise. For those of you who are new and would like to join this journey of mine, then please feel free to subscribe to join the Blue and White Angel Brethren today, and click the notification bell so that you are notified whenever I release new content. And check out my other videos too. Thank you all so much for watching this episode of Angel Rise. I hope you all have a great day or night whenever you are watching this. And until we meet again, my name is Lord Nicolina, be strong, stay positive, and God bless. Bye!